Hello, I'm Mike of Neil of Dice. This is the Kibble Space Program. Training, Orbiting 101. This training scenario covers the basics of flying a spacecraft in orbit, essential maneuvers like raising and lowering apoapsis and periapsis nodes, and also important concepts such as what the terms apoapsis and periapsis mean. You start off in a low circuit orbit around the Kerbin. Orbiter 1 training craft ready to go. Let's do that then. Let us see. I presume Orbiter 1 is just going to be the same thing that they uh, got me into. Oh, no, no. I think it's a slightly different beast. Okay. Let's go over here where we can see what it looks like. Uh, welcome to the Orbiting 101 training program. I'm Gene Kerman, and I'm going to teach you the basics of orbiting. I assume you've already done the basic flight tutorial, and now we're going to learn how to get around space. Basics. Orbiting is nothing more than free falling. The only thing is that when you fall, you're moving so fast forward that you actually miss the ground. Because there's no atmosphere to slow you down this height, you'll continue to free fall endlessly around the planet without having to use your engines. We're currently on a low, almost circuit orbit around the curb and to get a basic view of the situation, press the M key, which is what I was going to do anyway, because I was interested. Uh, yes, Elsa, so we're, we're about 200 clicks. I can right click there, I can right click there, and I go, oh look! 199 versus 200 clicks, that's quite cool. Okay, let's get practical now. Trust you already know your basic spacecraft controls. Up here, they're very much the same, except that the lack of the atmosphere makes your ship behave quite differently because there's no drag slowing you down. For every input you apply, you have to find opposite one to stop again. Going to remotely nudge your altitude attitude control so we'll try and get it back under control afterwards. So no. So it's telling me to not use the um oh, hang on. It's telling me to not use the SAS. Uh, which is going to make life interesting, to say the least. Ha. Huh. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm essentially trying to do it on one axis at a time, which is, which is not necessarily that helpful. Oh, there we go, that helped. Please, it actually. Altitude control is an essential skill for a spacecraft pilot. You master it, and you'll be well on your way to becoming an expert pilot. You can try it again or press next. Let's try. Let's. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the netball. You've probably seen the symbols. I don't get the colours. I don't know why. Might have a bit of a chat. Might have to look about see what what's causing that. Anyway, uh, green ones, which, I don't, which aren't green for me, are prograde and retrograde. The blue ones, which aren't blue for me, are radial in and radial out. And normal and anti-normal. So you can actually, I don't know, can I select these? Yeah, I can, okay. So prograde and retrograde, so that's pointing me towards my orbit. Normal is perpendicular to the, my plane of orbit. So up and down. And radial out is relative to the planet. So at this point I'm pointing directly up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Alright, let's try something more involved. Open your map again. What we uh, want to do now is go through some of the basic maneuvers you need to know. Let's start by raising your apparatus first. Apparatus is at the highest point in orbit and is indicated by the node mark AP. Which I can't really read, but I can do that. I can I can hover over it and right click on it. Uh, the best place to raise your apparatus is at the periapsis, which is the lowest point in your orbit. If you hover your mouse, mouse over, uh, you can see that we're going to reach in a few minutes. Once there, we will face prograde and burn. So let's go. Let's just go face prograde. And now uh, it's wanting us to time warp. Time is passing five times faster than normal, so we should be there in a few moments. You can control time warp with the period and comma keys or click the arrows on the panel on the top of the screen. Okay. This time we'll put us normal uh, a minute before we reach periapsis and work and start lowering the rate even earlier. Outside of training, you'll have to warp down to one time so don't go too fast don't miss your mark you can also click on any given point on your orbit and click the warp here option so I'm going to do that well that is nice and silky smooth I'm really enjoying Kerbal at the moment <laughs> right uh, prograde which I've done uh, yeah okay so it's wanting me to Go to program which I've done and then click SAS engage for you to keep it steady. Press the Z key to accelerate at full throttle. Uh, notice that the opposite side of your orbit starts to rise as you accelerate. Keep thrusting program until you access uh, 800,000 meters. That's a fair way. Right, halfway there. Well, not really halfway though, because we started at 20, okay. Probably cut us off. Uh, man, uh, automatically. So, so, oh, there we go. Well done! This is how you raise your apparatus node. With orbital maneuvers, pretty much everything you do will affect the opposite side of your orbit, so to raise your highest point, you must thrust forward at the lowest point. Similarly, to raise your periapsis, you thrust prograde at apoapsis, Run away to our apparatus, let's now do that. And so the time warp's been done for us. On our way to the apparatus node now, notice how your ship loses speed as we rise. It's because we are climbing away from the planet. If we lose speed, we go higher, and just the ball down and thrown in the air, back on turbine. Higher you are, the slower your orbit will be. Notice how the moon's orbital speed is around 540 meters a second. Uh, you can see that by hovering over the moon. There you go. While yours is much higher because our orbit is so much lower than that of the, the sun. Okay. That is a quite a good uh, ref reflection. So I'm going at uh, 1351, and that's going at 540 odd. Uh, Press prograde. Uh, once you're in the right direction, fire up the engine and watch the periapsis rise. Keep burning prograde until the orbit is nearly circular. Eccentricity will be zero. It's perfect circular, let's keep an eye out for that. Well, we're not going to get exactly zero, but. Nicely done. Uh, this is how you change the size of your orbit. The maneuver should come in handy in many situations. Now we're changing orbital inclination. This is actually generally quite expensive. Uh, your orbital inclination is the angle between your orbit and Kerbin's equator. Manage to maintain a reasonable amount of control so far. We should be in a nearly 0% inclined orbit, which is about right. Uh, Cleansing is going by thrusting a 90 degree angle to your prograde vector but without changing your pitch relative to the surface. In our present equatorial, nearly equatorial orbit, prograde is due east. We need to increase our inclination so that our orbit takes us into higher altitudes, higher latitudes, but to burn towards the normal direction. 
So I'm going to cheat you, Jeff. Yes. Uh, the Mad Ball once again comes to your rescue. In this case, you'll need to use the normal vector, which is the pointy up arrow. Try that now. Turn the chip to the normal vector and open the throttle. I'm going to use SAS and just click on it and have that go there. Notice yeah. how, as you burn north, the orbit starts to tilt up on the side. But for the periapsis and the the apoapsis will remain, remain the same. That's because we're accelerating on a completely new direction, so this move doesn't take away any energy from the orbit. change your orbital information. For those manoeuvres, it's always better to do it at the slowest part of the orbits. So do not spend as much altitude to turn orbit around. This also means inclination changes on larger orbits, such as we're doing now, may take less fuel than the same inclination on a lower orbit, which is a thing you find out a lot. Also, keep in mind that changing inclination doesn't necessarily mean accelerating to the north or south, it means accelerating at a right angle to your prograde vector, which in our nearly equatorial orbit also happens to be towards the north. Now I'm going to lower our orbit. Okay, that sounds exciting. Uh, as you can imagine, lowering your orbit is very much like raising it only in reverse, because there's no air up here. We can use our main engines to decelerate as well as accelerate, because only the ship's orientation, because the ship's orientation will not cause problems with airflow and trying flying backwards is as easy as flying forwards. Uh, and because our orbit is in the circuit, we're not going to wait for um, to get to the apoapsis of the periapsis. I'm just, just going to do it any old way. Oh, okay. I was, well, I was expecting it to say, oh, okay, go to the pro retrograde. It actually says go to retrograde and, and start up your engine. Uh, we're going back down to 20k. That's not going to stop me this time. Um, I want, want me to get as close to 20k as possible. So if I go too low, then I'm going to have to turn around and go back again. Start slowing down. And just kind of nudge my way in. Is it 20k you want? Yeah. That's it, you're on your way back. Uh, 20k is, is low enough to hit the atmosphere. Well, 60k is low enough to hit the atmosphere. So you're now on a re-entry course. Once you're below 60k, the atmosphere will start slowing the ship down to the point that it won't have enough velocity to rise back up again. And that's all we need to do for this lesson. You keep playing and uh, form normal, more maneuvers, arrive this part down to a landing, or you could skip to the next lesson. Let's see if I can. I can fast forward, so I'm gonna f I'm gonna fast forward this one. I'm gonna actually land, I think. Um, yeah, so we should be landing in the daytime. Uh, 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 right, let's go to. This view. Now, I'm... Yeah, I'm just going to use all the fuel. Everyone's very happy, I don't know why. Yeah, but I have Bill and Bob. So I'm going to use all my fuel to slow down. Uh, and 
then decouple. I was hoping to not land on the in the ocean. I don't know why I didn't want to land in the ocean. It's really bad. Uh, I wasn't going to make it back to KSC or anything. So. Goodbye, engine. RCS going slightly mental. We've got quite a lot of electric charge, so we should be okay. So I can in theory, well actually no, I was about to say, I can in theory deploy my parachute, but... Uh, everything's fine, everyone's kind of concerned. <laughs> to look around from different angles, different, uh, different kerbals. Oh, Bill, that made Bill happy. I'm not quite sure why, but it made Bill happy. Is that a docking port on the bottom there? No, okay, that's just the bottom of the command port. No heat shield. Ah, oh, there we go, we seem to be coming out of uh, thermal shock. Are we gonna? Are we gonna make it? Are we gonna get to shore? I don't think so. I, if I remember rightly, in a real uh, command module, you actually had some control over that by because the the central gravity was was actually slightly off, so you could you could flip it up and then get some lift depending on where you you know, by rotating the craft up or down, you could give yourself um, aerodynamic lift, which I always thought was neat. I don't think that's a feature on this particular. So in theory, I think see in theory, I can move over that way if I wanted to. Uh, shoot is safe, so we'll deploy the shoots. They won't deploy until we get to about two k, so that's fine. Because I, I oh no, Bob's not looking happy. Neither, neither's Bill. Jebediah's happy. There we go. And I can really do with it. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we have, uh, we're going to be like uh, going landing pretty much exactly on the beach there. Uh, speed up a bit. Last few meters. Actually, didn't quite quite like ten meters a second. So that's quite. We're like six foot away from shore, which is hilarious. So there you go. So well done, lads. Uh, so that's us done. But I can't recover the vessel because this is not actually proper mission. So anyway, we're down and safe. Everyone's very happy. Uh, Jeb's going to get out, I think. Can you get out? He can't get out. Uh, Jeff's not going to get out. I thought he was going to get out, but he's not going to get out. No, we're not allowed to get out. Oh, sad. Sad face. So, uh, the, la uh, the lads are back home. They're not dead. They haven't died. They haven't been up in the atmosphere, which is very nice for them. Um, so, I'm going to say thanks so much for watching. Uh, come visit New Love Dice at newlovedice.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. You can like and subscribe the video if you're enjoying it. I'm doing things in the wrong order. I just lost the bottom. Well, that's really weird. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, links to our Twitter and all that kind of stuff is in the video description. And until next time, reach for the stars.